You taught me a couple things this morning that I'd never heard of before. I'm like, really? You can do that? Yeah. 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 Never ending, man. It is. Come never on, ending. people. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you want to know about our day, <laughs> check out ChopperGuy53 Instagram, and you'll find out why I got in the mood today. <laughs> Yeah, go to Chapter Guy 53 and figure out the uh, what put, put, put Chris in a, <laughs> a bad mood for lunch today. Yeah. Oh <laughs> goodness. All right, what are we doing? We go 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 around. You want to do the ass cycle or yep. you want to? Uh... Ah, I think he's slowing down. All right, perfect. Go to traffic copter three short tells Come to over top the approach end of two seven on the right downwind five. All right. Yep. Perfect. All right. Welcome okay. back to Hug Daily Fight Brief, and today we're going to talk about something that Chris and I, even though we trained together years ago, now we have a little bit of a different take on how we apply this, and we'll talk about that so you get two different, a little bit, two bit different views. But we're going to talk about the, the need for, when you enter an auto rotation, you need an aft cyclic pull. And if you don't, the nose drops, RPM drops, and then you just start chasing the thing all the way down. Once you, at the beginning of the auto, if you don't enter it nice and get a nice entry, then you and you one thing's off, then you chase it all the way down. You're up and down with the collective, or you're back and forth with the cyclic. So during the odd rotation entry, a nice small aft pull, I call it set the speed. Because what I do, if, if I'm using 70 for a glide, I like to enter about 72, 73, 75. A little faster than my glide speed, so when I go down collective, down, <laughs> Proper pedal, now that I'm flying two different <laughs> aircraft, right? proper pedal, and a small aft cyclic pull. That brings me back to 70. It sets the speed, keeps the RPM nice, nose doesn't drop, and it makes for a nice auto rotation. And then I mentioned yesterday that there is an, accident, an EMS accident where the guy's traveling along at 120 knots or whatever, has an engine failure at cruise speed, and they determined that he didn't apply aft cyclic, lost order, rotor RPM, and I believe everybody died. And it's been a while since I read that accident, but that's a legitimate accident, re accident report that happened in EMS. You know, the, the improper training from the company on what to do during cruise flight at that speed, not giving him the proper training to make sure that you do the aft cyclic pull. So it's more than just a training aspect. If you have it in the real world, especially going faster than your normal training speed, you need to a small amount of aft cyclic to keep the nose from dropping and keep the RPM where it's at. Now, we try not to discuss this stuff too much before we go out for the day, but this we talked about a little bit today. And you have just a little bit different view on the entry. So go ahead and give them your thoughts, kind of what, where you've taken well, it in your training as an instructor. If, if you've watched previous videos, you, you know that I like to do real world stuff. I like to teach real world. So I know once you get your rating, you're going to basically go, be going from point A to point B. And you're going to go from point A to point B at cruise airspeed. So why not practice your auto rotations or your entry into your autos at cruise airspeed? Sure. Makes sense. And the same with the altitude. I know that you're going to go 500 feet above a or AGL or 1,000 feet AGL, whatever you're going to do. So why, you know, why when you enter the auto... Um, are you exactly at 500 AGL and, you know, 60 knots because that's what we want during our glide? No, I want you at, you know, if you're going to go cross country at 1500 indicated, then I want to be at 1500 indicated and I want you at 80 knots or whatever your aircraft uh, cruise speed is. 80 knots is yep. what we use in here. So that's how I train. That's what I want them to train. And so I'm going to have a little bit more of an aft cyclic input than you would because I'm cruising at 80 and I want to back it down to 60. Faster so, speed. Absolutely. So yeah, so it's just a slight little, and that's how I teach. And this, down left, aft. Down collective, left pedal, aft cycling. Down left, aft, down left, aft, down left, aft. And if you have to make a turn, down left, aft, turn. So that's that's how I get it get it in there. And so today we're just gonna set up for a straight in auto and you're just gonna see, I'm here I am cruising at 80, I'm at 1600 indicated, down left, aft. And then just get your scan going. And then maybe after this one, then maybe we could do one where you don't use aft and see what happens. Or, let's see, I'll, we'll pick up this up after you get done right. doing your thing here.
All right, clear on the left. Everything's looking good. Here we go. And three, two, one. Down left aft. Looking for that six. And in this, this aircraft's going to slow down anyway. So you're just actually, you may just be adding just a little bit of input. So you have now gone through a little bit. So I'm just going to push forward a little bit. Here comes my treetop level. A little bit of a flare. A little bit more flare. Bottle's coming back on. And pedal in. So what I noticed was, because you went from 80 to 60, your nose actually came up. Yeah. Which is a good thing, right? It's better going, it could be. Almost like good, it. but it also loads the rotor, so it keeps your RPM up there. But uh, in this aircraft, I don't know, it's kind of strange, I guess, because I don't. It never happened in the instrument. When you enter the auto, this thing automatically slows down. It just it just does. Um, so, you know, you're just applying a little bit of aft pressure, a little aft cyclic, to bring your speed back. But, you know, the tendency of overdoing it is great with a student because they're just learning. But And that's and that's part of it. We've had this discussion before. That's part of the reason why I say 60 instead of 50. And I will tell you the POH from Gimbal states 50 right. in their autos. Okay? Right. But I like to use 60 because guys get slow. Right. So if you shoot for 60, you may end up at 55. Right. You may end up at 50. Hell, you may even end up at 40. But right. at least 60 gives you a little bit of cushion there. And you can always burn that speed off. Can we go Can down. we go do one with and not use any aft? Yeah. And see and how different it would be from what we just did? Yeah. And to touch on a point that you made either while we were flying or before about the... Yeah, if a student... You said it earlier. If, let's say 60 is the number you're using for your training aircraft. You'll you'll get students that like they want to enter the auto at 60. Yeah. And they want to glide at 60. Right. It doesn't work if you have an aft pull because you right. enter it, and then when you give that little bit of aft pull that you need to keep the nose from lowering, then you you pull, you pulled back. So let's say you just went from 60 to 55. So then you go, oh, well I'm a little slow. I need 60. So they go back forward. And then they hit 65, and then they go, oh, uh, not too fast. Then they pull it back. And that's why I'm saying how they'll seesaw with the speed. If you don't have the nice entry, you don't pull the aft, the nose goes down, then you start monkeying with that cyclic. Right. And then you still might start monkeying with the collective too. And it's RPM goes, so then yeah. they pull up. They pull up too much, so what they do, they go down too much. Right. And as a student, that's normal. Yeah. Everything's going to be everything's gonna be exaggerated. And it's, and it's all about muscle memory. You know, yeah. so and that's the, again. It goes back to why I like to be at 80 when I do it, because you want that muscle memory of aft cyclic. If you enter the auto at 60, then you don't have that muscle memory. Or if you enter the auto auto at 60 and still pulled aft cyclic, now where are you going to be? You're going to be at 40 or 35 or whatever. This thing slows down by itself. Right. So that's why I like to use that 60, because students get slow, and the aircraft automatically slows down. So, so in the event of that EMS pilot that was killed along with his crew. If he would have done the aft cyclic pull, accident probably wouldn't have happened. How do they know? I don't know. I'm assuming computers on board. Oh, how yeah. did they exactly determine when they're all dead? I don't know how they determined right. it, but right. that's what the accident report said. And that's how it came out, that they determined that well, and high forward speed, well, or engine failure, and, you know, he's busy in the cockpit or whatever. Right. We don't We don't know. We well, weren't there. there's such a thing as, uh, you know, airplane people don't realize this, but, we, you know, we actually have a V and E power off. You know, so right. maybe if you, you know, you're already at high speed, your cruise flight, you have an engine failure, you don't slow down, you could be pushing your V and E power off speed. So um, that could have been a factor. I, I don't know. I, I think I've heard of the accident you're talking about, but I have not read any yeah. of it. I remember distinctly because... It came up, I believe, in our EMS training when I was still in EMS, and, and we discussed it at length, so I know it's a legitimate accident that happened. All right, so this time I'm going to enter the auto, and I'm not. I'm just going to try to maintain our uh, airspeed where we were, not pull aft cyclically, but I think you'll see that this aircraft, that nose comes up. And it even even without an aft? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to really try, because now it's, you know, it's in my brain to pull right. aft, so I'm going to really try to keep that cyclic right where we were when we entered it. Goshen trap, got the three shows, tells on a right base turning final five, Goshen. All right, everything looks good. Yeah, I'm still new to the cabri, but I know other aircraft I've taught in, it's more pronounced. If you don't do an aft pull, yeah. you, you actually legitimately notice the nose drop a little bit, RPM drop. Yeah, I think the way it's set up, that nose actually comes up in it. That's why. So I'm going to 
I'm going to try to hold it there. Bird 80. And I'm going to really have to think about not pulling back. Clear on the left, make sure nobody's coming down. I don't see anybody. Clear on the left. All right. Here we go. In three, two, one. Aha! Uh -huh. right, so it does. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. So maybe that's what it is, part of it. So it did. That nose dropped, and you see the rotor RPM came down? Yep. Oh, and it was immediate. Yeah. I mean, it was immediate. Well, that nose went. I wonder if I was kind of pushing forward, too. Well, you might have. I, I don't know. All right, there's I a couple of them, a little bit of flare. I suppose that's possible. But it did kind of. It did. Uh, I was, expecting, I was expecting to be surprised and go, oh, yeah, you're right. The nose didn't really drop, but it sure it it did. I was like, it surely did. It did drop. And maybe that's, maybe when when students enter the auto, they're pulling aft cyclic, and with the aft cyclic along with the nose coming up, it just, it's more pronounced. Right. With that one, I was really trying to keep cyclic forward so we kept our airspeed, but yeah, you're. Kenny Keller, good, good. Uh, yeah, that nose kind of came down, didn't it? We just kind of died. It did. You see that RPM? I was surprised by that RPM, yeah. too. Right away we got the low horn. Yeah. Right away. That was kind of learning hey. something new every day, aren't you? I am, and it, it's just fun well, to go out and... It's fun to talk about this stuff and then go out and test it and and see how it directly affects one particular aircraft. Yeah. You know? Well... You know, I guess we're just going to have to go in because we're having way too right. much damn fun. I but mean, you, you, you got to quit while the fun, I right. mean, we're having such a great flight. I think we need to call out a day and go but, in because it's but just... But do you think I can do enough landings out here I can write my name? Uh, probably, I'm sure you could. Maybe I can get Chopper Guy 53 out here <laughs> written on the snow. That would take you, that would t I bet you'd take, I bet you'd take damn near an hour <laughs> to, to print out with your skids Chopper Guy 53. Because you'd have to do the... Because you got two skids, so it'd be like an outline. Oh, yeah, like, it'd be like a, a thick lettering. Stick two lines. Yeah, like you're right, yeah. C, H. That would take you a while. We got nothing but time. Let's just burn a chopper guy 53 <laughs> in the snow. Can I use my skid for it? My, my skid tail? My, my my stinger? Can I just drag well, the stinger? You could just right? drag the sk stinger, or if you were really good, you could just put the aircraft off center and just use one skid to write chopper guy Right, oh, yeah, yeah. Goshen traffic up to three zero delta departing five left traffic will be uh, on a left downwind niner Goshen. I'm sure it would work on television. You know what we need to do? We keep talking about we should do something to sit around the office. We need to do what you see on YouTube where vocal coach reacts to the Judas Priest heavy metal singer. <laughs> or you see, you know, a lot of airplane guys now, airplane pilot, uh, uh, dissects airplane landing on TV. Oh, yeah. We need to do helicopter pilots dissecting landings you see on TV and yeah. movies. Where we're sitting in the office, we got some beers, and we're going, hey, look at this guy taking off. No hover check. Right. Oh, he, you know, did this. Look at that nose down to, uh, uh, profile on his or takeoff. Or how you see maybe like... Uh a G2 on TV, but it sounds like a Huey. Yeah, yeah, we could make fun of that, because that happens. Um, well, they're always Hueys. It's always a Huey that, that you hear on TV. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the Huey. My dad flew Hueys for 20 years. But there's other sounds than a Huey out there a helicopter makes. You ever heard of 407? That's a completely distinctive sound. How about the, the helicopter always goes over the mountain before you see the explosion, <laughs> right? Because they don't want to toast a, a quarter of a million dollar helicopter right. or a million dollar helicopter. So you, you fly the helicopter over the hill, or you can't see it, and then there's an explosion. And a huge explosion. Oh, gee, that's, yeah, we know the helicopter really crashed on the other side of the mountain. <laughs> Way too much fun. This could get all the frustration out before we went flying, because I because I thought I was worried that we'd have a bad flight, but because we right for oh you're not supposed to tell them that don't tell uh, bleep them that. It. they got they got bleep all that out yeah I believe it let's just say we went somewhere that started with the C they usually are known for ice cream but they really screwed up my sandwich hell yeah I heard it. I heard a couple jokes yesterday. I was trying to remember them so I could tell you on camera, and I can't remember the jokes. I get the morning corny from 
How do how do ghosts listen to music? I don't know. By Bluetooth, of course. Oh God. <laughs>